Atlantic aircraft have finally come into war thunder. All right, everybody, welcome back. So I figure I could go ahead and cover a plane that I at least have very fond memories of. Uh, this is the F-100. Now, the F-100 was added to the game back, I think it was 1.85 in Supersonic, and it was the first Supersonic plane that I personally unlocked. Now, even though it was worse than the Big 19, I still had a very good time in it, and I have a lot of very fond memories. So I figured I might as well go ahead and revisit it. And you may be wondering, well, Lee, why are you playing the F-100A? You know, clearly, A is below D, so the D must be better, right? Well, not really. At least not for ARB. So, the F-100D is slightly faster. And I mean, only its top speed. There's really no essential difference in the top speed in most games, and the F-100A actually is lighter, and it has a better thrust-to-weight ratio than the F-100D, which means you're going to accelerate better, and you also turn inside the F-100D. So, in most cases, you are going to out-accelerate, outturn and generally outspeed the F100D because even though theoretically the D has a higher top speed it's not going to get there in time because the acceleration is so poor in comparison. This makes the plane a whole lot more competitive. Uh, the D is still not terrible don't get me wrong but having this extra flight performance is really really essential especially when you're fighting stuff like F5Cs a lot. The matchmaker has gotten better as of late, and I'll be talking about that later on, but you're still going to be getting a ton of 10.3 games, and so that extra flat performance is really needed. What this does allow you to do is, even though you don't have flaps, this thing does get auto slash in the front of the wings. So, very quite often, you're going to be pulling 10, 11, sometimes even 12 Gs. You can see right here, I'm easily sustaining 10 Gs in a turn while I'm holding my speed. The F100A feels a whole lot better than the D to me. And in this matchmaker, this flight performance is more than enough most of the time. Because if you see what I'm fighting, a lot of them are going to be premiums like the A-10 or the A-6, which don't really have flight performers in the first place, and it's more than enough. I'm also fighting stuff like, you know, the F-104s, which I can just turn aside of. As long as you keep your speed up in this plane, you're golden. You're able to turn aside most things. Now, once you get to lower speeds, like below 500 kilometers an hour or so, you're kind of boned, especially against stuff like the F5, they will easily turn inside you, so you gotta keep your speed up. At these higher speeds though, the performance is pretty competitive, and you're able to stay there most of the time because the energy retention is pretty good as well. Now, here's an F104 behind me. Uh, I do pretty much everything better than him except for raw top speed and his roll rate as well. Now, I'm not sure what exactly he was thinking, uh, but he decided to be it would be a great idea to, after I whiff my shot on this A6, uh, to go ahead and start air braking and turning with me when he could have just run away and there was nothing I could do because I'm also low on gas. Which, by the way, I recommend running 20 minutes of fuel. Most of the time you're not going to need more than that and it really does help with your performance. Now, I do whiff a ton of my shots. I am not the best with this plane uh, when it comes to aiming. Especially because, I don't know if you can tell, but the rudder is making it a little bit difficult for me. That is my one gripe when it comes to flight performance with this plane. is It's pretty difficult to aim sometimes because the rudder loves to wobble all over the place. It's not as bad as someone like the Kefir, for example, which, if you didn't know, has absolutely terrible rudder wobble at low speeds, but it is enough that you'll it'll throw your shots off a lot of the time, just like that right there. It just, just a little bit on the rudder. I am able to correct for it most of the time, just by rolling instead, but it doesn't need to keep in mind. It's not terrible. It will hinder you sometimes. But I figure I should go ahead and talk about the guns. The 20 mils did get buffed recently for real shatter. I would still recommend running the AP belts instead on the M39s. They just generally do more reliable damage for me. Provided you can actually hit, of course, as you see me whiffing even more shots. Like, ugh, I, I feel so bad sometimes. But as long as they hit a critical component, they'll love setting fires. They'll do some critical damage as well. Unfortunately, they're still not as reliable as in, like, a DEFA, for example, with the fuel explosions. But most of the time with four of these, you're not really going to be having any issues as long as you get a good hit into somebody. You'll get plenty of one-shots, or at least, you know, severely damaging critical hit. That A6 got evaporated, for example. They also have very nice velocity, which kind of just lets you point wherever you want. And within roughly around six to 700 meters or so, you're not really going to have an issue hitting people. You can see right here, I'm just leading in front of this FAE, and he gets absolutely smoked. Two of them on the F5 is a little bit iffy when it comes to damage for me, but having four of them, I've got no qualms with this. If I hit something, it dies most of the time. So, still would not recommend full commit head-on with an A-10. That 30 mil has a ton of spray, and it will go everywhere. 
But you can always just pull out of the way, and luckily in my case, my teammates just uh, decided to go straight into them and kill them. So part of the reason I actually went ahead and decided to make this video in the first place is because this plane recently got access to the AIM-9E. And while this isn't anything special, having four of them at 9.3 is a pretty decent kit, honestly. Now, it is only a 10G missile, but the really nice thing about it compared to the AIM-9B is that A, it has a better motor, it has the same motor as the AIM-9J that you'll find later on in the tree, and B, it also allows you to lead it outside of the crosshair, unlike the AIM-9B. Now, one thing you can do whenever you're firing these off is you can actually lead them a little bit outside of the, 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 the technical gimbal limit, like you see me doing that right there. And as long as you fire it before it breaks off, it'll still track. You can see I just did it right there against the AV-8. I think he was a bot, but it's still a pretty decent example. You probably also saw me do it earlier on the A-32, and that's just a way you can lead them in front because they don't pull very hard. They have pretty all right range for 9.3. They're reasonably agile. The extra energy they get from the motor does help, and I believe they get a bit more fin AOA as well. It's just that at the end of the day, 10 Gs is still 10 Gs, so you're not really going to be hitting maneuvering targets with these. Just like with the AIM-9B, you're going to be hitting people that are either slow, damaged, or just unaware. And here is a perfect example straight in front of me, an F-104 flying in a straight line less than a kilometer away. I lead it a bit in front of him, and the missile easily gets to him and deletes him. The addition of these AIM-9Es really made this plane a whole lot better. And I find it especially hilarious because if you look at the American F-100, which already had them, now the Taiwanese F-100 got them. Surprise, surprise, the French F-100 did not get them this batch, and I find this incredibly amusing. The French now get an F-100, which doesn't have the cast option that the American one has, has the same flight model, which is worse than the F-100A, and also doesn't get access to the good missiles. Amazing. You'll love to see it. Uh, speaking of which, if y'all want to stick around, I am actually going to be doing a video on the French F-8, which, for some reason, doesn't get flares, which is just amazing. You can probably expect that's not in the next month. But regardless of that, this plane is an overall pretty solid pick for the battle rating right now. I've actually been getting a surprising amount of down tiers playing 9.3. I've been seeing a lot of 8.7 and 8.3 games. Now, I think that might be specific to your matchmaker. Like, I've been playing a lot of, of course, the F-100A, and I've been playing a lot of the Hunter FGA-9, which is British. So I'm not 100% sure if it's all of 9.3 or if it's specifically, you know, the British and the Chinese matchmaker. If you would like to, feel free to let me know in the comments below. How's your 9.3 matchmaker been lately? Because I hope it gets better. I really enjoy playing this battle rating. It's just that with how many flareless planes you get here, it really does not help when you're trying to play, you know, your F-100 or something else, and you're having to fight aim that ls and R-60Ms every game. So I'm hoping that this is a trend and we're going to start seeing a lot more of these down tiers to 8.3. You're at least not getting 10.0 and 10.3 every single match. Because it's just not fun playing a flareless plane and having to fight missiles from the 70s. Like you have to do with, you know, this A-10 beneath me, which has four aim that ls four 30G all-aspect missiles. And is still able to see me. Now, I do have much better flight performance than he does, but unfortunately, that doesn't really help me most of the time. So, in any case, I recommend giving this plane a shot if you do have the Chinese tech tree unlocked. I really enjoyed it. It's pretty fun dunking on better planes, and it, you know, it gives me a dose of nostalgia, because I really do kind of miss those old times. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch y'all next time. So, peace, y'all.